Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to do a really quick uh, video. Hopefully. I always say that sometimes and sometimes it's not a quick video. Um, how to do a proper word study. Okay, someone gets on behind the camera and he's talking for five minutes and I'm not going to be, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I saw the five minute, uh, a few, a short video that, um, what was it? Uh, see if I can find it. Okay. Is person synonymous with be with with a being? The word person is synonymous with the word being. And um, a brother in Christ did this and said, "What well, we're going to read here?" But I'm going to go through. It. Basically, he just read from this Webster's 1820 dictionary and said, "See, I'm 100% right. Everybody else is 100% wrong." That's not how you do a proper word study. And today we're going to talk about how to do a word a proper word study. Okay. Someone says that being, make sure I say this right, is synonymous with person. They're interchangeable. They're used for the same thing. Okay. Now, when someone tells you that Godhead is God and one being, what's our first reaction, brother and sister Christ? I mean, when it comes to, if you're saying... That God says, God's Word, where's God's Word found? King James Bible. Uh, for English-speaking people, God, people, God's perfect written Word. So once, when someone says it's interchangeable, so I can say God in one being, our first response is chapter and verse where God the Father is ever referenced as a being, where Jesus is referenced as a being, or the Holy Spirit's referenced as a being. So that's our first thing. But this study is not about that as much as it is this. When someone gives you a word, because at first, but I, I have a confession to make. At first, when I was listening, I was like, you know how you get, sometimes you can have pride in your heart. Sometimes you can have a little bitterness in your heart. And I'm like, being's not even in the Bible. So then I, and then God pricked my heart and said, oh, you might want to type that in. And when I typed in the word being in the, um, because we got the, the physical copy we're going to be talking about, Strong's Concordance, and then I have an online Strong's Concordance, and then I have a Strong's, the sword Strong's Concordance actually on the hard drive, like on the computer. And I typed it in, and God's like, boom! There's millions of times, I, I exaggerate, but there's tons of times that the word being is actually used in the scriptures. The word being is in scriptures. So then God kind of, you know, knocked me down a peg or two. Okay, don't get so prideful just because so-and-so, someone that hurt you, don't get prideful, don't get bitter. Okay, uh, let's do this right. Okay. So that would be my first response. Where does, is Jesus Christ? I always say this, brother says Christ. I always say that it's God, the Godhead is God, the Father. There's only one capital G, God, the Father. God the Father in the person singular of Jesus Christ. Why? Because four times Jesus is called a person in the King James Bible for uh, uh, God's perfect written word for English speaking people. Four times is Jesus referred to as a person. God the Father is never referred to as a person. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, God is a spirit, the Bible says, the whole time about the Holy Spirit. He or it is never referenced as a person. He's masculine. Not necessarily means that the Spirit's a person because he's called a he. He is, means it's masculine. God is a man. The man, there's one meter between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. If you believe Jesus is God, then you believe that he's, that God is a man. Okay. It's that simple. But I use the word person singular because this backs up what I'm saying. When you say the Godhead is God in one being, is that scriptural? That's the first thing that I would hit up with any brother in Christ. Even if I didn't have a problem, uh, this is Brother Brian at uh, Born Again Barbarian. Um, even if it's a brother in Christ, even if it's with somebody else that I believe is false, I don't believe he's false, I believe he's fallen away, but I don't believe he's false. My thing is, is chapter and verse. That'll solve everything, chapter and verse. And lately, we have brethren that are getting away from chapter and verse. 
He just read the definition and said, therefore, see, because the Webster's 1828 dictionary said it, therefore, I'm right, everybody else is wrong. Is that how we're supposed to do things? The very first study I ever got to do, Brother Sister Christ, and I was excited thinking about it, talking with the Lord about the first study. I think it was the first study where it was the rock study. And we went through every mentioning in the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation of the word rock. And we put the word in context and we had pictures of, you know, examples and everything. And it's, 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 a, it's a study. It's, a, it's an ordeal. But to do a proper word study, that's what this is all about. It's not me about me trying to attack anybody. This is me about saying, we're going to sh show you how to do a proper word study and not fall into the trap of being lazy. There's times when I did that rock study, I found definitions that weren't in here. Oh, yeah. Uh, when I've done word studies, I can't remember if it was the rock study, but I've done word studies where I, didn't, I found definitions that weren't in here, but that were in here. Remember, the Bible oftentimes will def def uh, define a word as it's used. And there's times where I've had to make up a little bit of my own definition to help me remember what it is. And I'm going to show you in this example of helping me remember what it is. Not that it's a different, like I'm changing the definition. I'm saying it in a way that helps me to understand. Because you know what my worst subject was growing up in high school and everything? And even in college. Okay, I went to Bible college. I went to regular college. Um, was English. I flunked a college class in English. Okay. English is not my uh, number one language. God has blessed me through the Holy Spirit to open His scriptures to me and help me to learn words. And I've had to do a lot more study on learning words. And I realize today the biggest problem we have, brothers and Christ, is today they keep saying English is an evolving language. And it's not. What they're doing is they're just adding a lot of definitions and they're subtracting a lot of definitions. They're taking one word, which you'll hear somebody say, this is very dangerous, brothers and Christ. When you hear someone say, um, I'll use the Godhead. Someone says, the Godhead, they'll read, the Godhead, in Him dwelt all the fullness in the Godhead bo bodily. Okay, and then they'll say, well, you know, it's the Godhead or Trinity. That's sinful, that's wicked, that's wrong, that's dangerous. You say, well, the Trinity's wrong. Yeah, the Trinity's wrong, period. But I'm saying what they just did. When you take one word and you replace it with another word, that's dangerous. That's somebody who's trying to mess up the word of God. If God said person, then why aren't you using the word person? If God said Godhead, why aren't you using the word Godhead? But what we see a lot in these Babel buildings is people are taking one word and replacing it with their own word. And that's what the English language today, it's not evolving. They're just take, we're trying to replace words with other words. They're trying to add definitions. They're trying to subtract definitions. When I did the rock study, there was a lot of definitions in here. But I think I went through less than half of the, I found less than half of those definitions in the word of God. The other half is the way the world uses the word rock. And when I do other studies, and that's what we're going to see here, there's really only one, <laughs> but I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to get, it, get you guys started, and I want you, brothers and sisters of Christ, to finish the study, okay? This is me trying to show you how to do some work for the Lord when it comes to Bible study. We're going to start a, a word study, I'm going to show you how to properly start one, and I want you to do the study and find out if, and we're going to use the word being, if being and person are equal to each other and can be used interchangeably according to this book right here. Not according to this book. We're going to use it. To, 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 I'm going to show you how to use this to do studies. But this is our final authority, brothers, says Christ. Not this. There's times where I didn't find the proper definition in here. It was only found in here. Okay? So we got to be careful. Okay? Be very careful. Okay? So I'm just going to get you started on a Bible study, and in the comment section, I'll, you guys can let me know how you're doing, okay? Because we're going to go through just the book of Genesis, one book in the Bible together, and I want you guys, brothers and sisters, guys, almost like it's homework, like you're doing a Sunday school class, it's like it's homework. I like to see you, brothers and sisters, Christ, go through the rest of the Bible and find out, okay? But we're going to do one book together, and I'm going to show you how I do word studies, how I was kind of taught and then learned to do it a lot more efficiently. Um... But this is how you do a word study. If you want, you can have this.
the, uh, the program I was using for this went down and then it popped back up because it went down for a little bit. Let me see if I can find it here. Right there, it came back up. So when it came back up, I'm wondering, hmm, with the internet, they can change things. So I went to here and I looked it up in here and all the definitions that are here that we're going to be reading off is the same that was here. Okay, you can get this, it was like uh, $80. It's expensive, don't get me wrong, it's expensive. But it's, to me, this is worth it. The number one thing you want to get is a good Bible, good King James Bible. And the good ones are usually 60 to 80 to 100 bucks. Okay, but if you can't afford that, any King James Bible is good as far as long as it's, you know, King James Bible. Um, they, they, some people say the authorized version, okay? King James 1611, the King James Bible. Okay. But the second investment I would make is this right here. It's worth it. You can get it, uh, I got it from the place I got Peter Ruckman's videos. Um, Bible Baptist Bookstore, I think it was. I found a good place. Sometimes you can get these on, on Amazon, uh, maybe eBay. I, have, I didn't go to those places. Um, but you can get this. This is a great investment. The second great investment to get is, I found this is a, at a used bookstore. <laughs> I found two of them and gave one of them away. But this is an ex a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. Um, it's an old one. 1974. Someone has it written in here because it was a used book when I bought it. It says, Debbie something, 1974. And it has a phone number. <laughs> but you look in this uh, printing, 1973. So when I found this, this is 1973 is when the printing, like the copyright is. Doesn't necessarily mean this is when this was printed. But it had to be printed before uh, at 1974, like a year later. You know? But... This is a uh, concordance. This is the third thing I would invest in. A concordance. So you can have a physical concordance in your hand and you look up words. I can look up the word being in here and it'll tell me every passage in the King James Bible where being is. The word being is. It's the same thing we use on here. We get so lazy, but it's faster. And I'm not against it. It's not a sin to be using a computer program. It's just today with technology, we can search the Bible a lot faster using a program online and you can do multiple words. Let me see over here. Uh, remember me. Remember the study we did on Remember Me, Samson, the Thief, Salvation? Well, we got another study coming up called uh, Remember Me, Hannah, Rachel, Trusting God. I'm hoping to get this out eventually in the next few days. But you can look up multiple words together in exact phrases. You can do a little bit more with the stuff online. This takes a lot more work. You have to look up every word remember and see if there's me after it in the passage just to add it to the study. And it takes a lot longer to do it by hand this way. But brothers and sisters in Christ, power goes out, you lose the program. That doesn't mean, oh, I'll just wait for the power to come back on or I'll, I'll wait for the program to come back up and start running. We need to stay in the Word of God and if God puts it on your heart to study, study. So you're not going to find this one unless you find it in a used bookstore. The one you're most likely going to see that I had when I was in Bible college, a lot of these books are from Bible college, is this one's what you're going to see. It's, it's still the same thing. This is a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. This says the new Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. And the only thing I think that's the difference here is the front half is the exact same as this front half. And what it is is the concordance part that tells you where all the words are in the Bible. The difference between the two is when they start getting into the Greek and Hebrew, this one likes to change the Greek and Hebrew and it's like ever evolving and everything. It's like compared to this, it's like you don't use that at all. Have nothing to do with the Hebrew word is this and the Greek word is this. Just stick with the concordance. That's all I use. That's all I've learned to use because I don't speak Hebrew, I don't speak Greek. And a lot of people that put this together, the new Strong's Concordance, they don't speak Hebrew and Greek either. They're going off books and what other people tell them. I feel, I think, yeah. So you want to stay away from the Hebrew and the Greek. Just stick with the concordance half where it just tells you when you look up a word, it'll tell you where that word is in the Bible. So when you're doing a word study, you want one of these if you're doing it by hand or a program on, on the computer, and you definitely want this because they might start changing the definitions on here. So I'm always now, ever since that, that program went down on the 
computer and then came back up, oh, everything's great. I still like to check here to make sure nothing got changed. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to have two pieces of paper. You can do notebook paper or you can do like if you have a computer to print stuff out. But let's say you just have a piece of paper, pencil, and you have these two. You can do word studies. You can do subject studies. You can do expository studies. Remember, expository studies are basically word studies and subject, uh, subject studies together. You read the whole verse and you find words you want to do studies on and subjects in that verse that you want to do sub studies on. And expository studies are hard, long work. Don't let, if someone tells you they're lazy expository studies, they're the ones that are lazy because they don't want to do the work. They want to throw out what I call, how do I say this in the right way, lazy studies. They want to do fast food studies. They don't want to do the work. Okay, there's no such thing as lazy expository studies. There's expository reading, and I've done that where we read and we just talk, brother, says Christ, like morning reading. That's how I read my Bible every morning. That's how I read my Bible every evening. Do an expository reading where you just read chapter and you start talking to the Lord. And as you get more hiding God's Word in your heart, the more you start hiding this in your heart, the more you can, in your head, start comparing Scripture with Scripture in your head as you're reading every morning and just talking to the Lord about His Word. And that's what you should do. You should start your day like that and you should end your day like that. But these are great tools to have. I have them over here. But I just wanted to show them. Okay? That you can do it this way by hand, or you can do it this way. When you're just doing a word study, this is still great. But when you want to combine words, this takes longer. <laughs> when you're doing subject studies and you're trying to combine more than one, this is always going to take longer than this. But either way you do it, it still takes time, brother, says Christ. It takes hours to put this in. If I was doing more, if I did every book in the Bible for you guys, we'd be doing a long study, and it would take me hours to put it together. Okay, and do the study. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing. Okay, it takes time. Okay. So what you want to do is have two pieces of paper. Let's say you did this. You get two pieces of paper out. And I tear it out and put two pieces of page, paper side by side. This is how to do a proper word study. When you're doing a Bible word study. Okay. On the first page, you make a table of contexts, Con context almost, just a table. And what do you mean by that? We're going to write all the definitions on this first page. I'm going to use this one. And then let's say you have this one is where you're going to write one, two, and leave space between them. Two, three, four, because what we're going to do over here is you write down, anytime you come across a verse that has that word in it, you write the Genesis such and such, Genesis this verse, and you put it under the definition that you find. And like I said, let's say you have ten definitions. Oftentimes when you do a word study, you're going to find out you only find three of those in the actual Bible. The rest is the world's way of doing it. That's what they've turned that word into. They've added definitions to those words. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just we've got to make sure that we're using the definition that's backed by the Word of God. This, I better get it on top. This doesn't always line up with the scriptures. That's why you got to be careful. This is not our final authority. I got a lot of my definitions from here, and then when I started doing the study for myself, going throughout the whole Bible, doing a word study on the word being, I realized that there was a better way for me to explain it, even though it's kind of like the first definition, but I wrote in a definition that made it so much easier for me because I'm not hardcore English, like an English major or anything like that. But let's go through the definitions. So you make it a paper that has a table that you actually do number one, you write out the definition. Number two, you write out the definition. On here, you can just go Genesis such and such, and you can write the number two beside it. Genesis such and such, definition number three. Such and such, definition four. However you want to do this side, but this side is where you actually go through ver a script, um, verse by verse every time the word is used, and then you write down what definition it is according to the context of how it's used. And we're going to go through that. Okay. So the first definition is a particular state or condition from the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. It says, being, part, uh, being, participle, present tense, okay, existing in a certain state. Here's the definition it gives. Uh, Psalms 49.12, it says, man, being in honor, abideth not. 
Okay, the man, to stay the man's be the stay of the man, he's in honor. And they connect man with honor using the word being. Being doesn't mean person in this in this passage. It's not a replacement for the word person. And I've added, like, so we'll get to my definition that I added that lines up with this. Bottom line, what it is, I'll just tell you. What it is, is you have a noun, person, place, or thing, being connected to another noun, person, place, or thing. It's connecting the two. That's what the word being is being used for. It connects the two. And that pretty much sums up every time I've seen it used so far. But I could have missed some things. Okay? When you do a word study and you get exhausted, you might have skipped a verse on accident or this, because it's hard work. That's why you go through it multiple times to see, hey, did I miss anything? Did I skip anything? But the example it gives, existence in a cert existing in a certain state, is taking a person, which is a noun, person, place, or thing, and it's connecting it to a state, which is a thing, person, place, or thing. So man, being in honor, abideth not. And it gives you a thing. Being is the state in honor. The state is in honor. So being is connecting the state, which is in honor, to another noun, which is, in this case, a man, which is a person. Okay? Uh, being noun existence, as God is the author of our being, equals in God we live and move and have our being, Acts 17, 28. So when you see there, in God... We, we have our being, okay? It's basically saying our existence. I put that down. Being equals existence. It's saying being is connecting us to God. We only exist because of God. It's still connecting to two nouns. Only this time it's connecting us to God the Father. Remember, Jesus is God the Father, and our, life, he's, our lifeline is connected to Him. He can kill anybody at any time. Remember, Jesus created all things. So what it's saying is it's connecting man, his creation, to the creator. That's what the word being is doing. It's connecting the two. But being in itself is not a person by itself. Using being by itself, that, it's not this definition. Okay? And you'll find, number one, well, I put definition number five. I like mine. Connecting one noun with another noun. Okay, person, place, or thing, it connects it to another person, place, or thing, and makes it where there's a connection. Almost like you're one, but connecting. Okay. Now, second uh, definition was a person existing applied to the human race. I don't like the word human, so I always try to miss, I, always, I forgot to change that to man. Okay, uh, mankind. Applied to mankind. Okay, that's the person. And that's where uh, Brother Brian got that definition here. He said, see, it's synonymous. Um, being is synonymous with person. Why are people having a big deal? Well, the lost world's always going to have a big deal. They're always going to use anything and everything to attack and everything. So that's their excuse. But for brothers and sisters in Christ, we're like, but it's not the same thing. Okay, person is what the Bible teaches. Being, using being as a person, is what the world teaches. And you're going to find that, but I'm not going to say this is absolute truth. I want you guys to do the study for yourselves and find out. Okay. But we're going to go through all the definitions. Definition three, an immaterial, intelligent existence or spirit. Superior beings, one of late they saw. Okay, use it in a sentence. Superior beings. Okay. Um, no, uh, definition number four, an animal... Remember, an animal is not a person. A person, by definition in the Bible, and they changed it with the world, the world changes it. person, by definition in the Bible, has a body, a soul, and it's always referred to someone who is living, a spirit. A man, a woman, and a child can be referred to as a person, not an animal. Animals aren't persons. Animals have spirits and bodies. They don't have souls. But in here, being can be referred to as an animal. That's what makes it dangerous, trying to use it for the Godhead. But verse 4 says, an animal, any living creature. My definition I added, and like I said, as you do the study for yourself, you're going to find definitions and you'll add definitions that aren't on your list. You'll be like, I can't find the definitions that you have on your list over here. You're going to be like, I can't find, that's not what the word's being used as. 
And you might find a definition that's not in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I have a few times. It's very rare, but I have a few times doing Bible studies with word studies. But I like my definition because it makes one more easier to understand and easier to see. Okay, verse 5, it kind of lines up with, ver uh, with definition number 1. I mean, not verse 5, but definition 5. Connecting one noun with another noun. Okay, remember, noun is person, place, or thing. Okay, the first definition shows a state or condition, but it's still linking a person to that state. What we read there, and we're going to read a lot, has to do with age. You'll see that a lot with age in the Bible. The man being three score and six years old. So it connects his age, which is a thing, person, place, or thing, the age to the person. It links it. You're going to find that out a lot, but it connects one noun with another. And remember what a noun is. It's a person, place, or thing. Now, if you notice in all these definitions, there are nouns involved in all these definitions. Person, place, or thing. Person, place, or thing. Uh, okay. But like I said, don't take my word for it. I want to see you, brothers and sisters Christ, do the study for yourself. Okay. Next, like I said, I already got ahead of myself, but you have one sheet here at the table of context. Next, you make a sheet over here and you write one through however many uh, definitions you had and you leave spaces, leave good spaces between them. It might take a few pages. And then you start writing, like definition number five, I put under five, Genesis 18.12. Turn to Genesis 18.12. Right. Turn to Genesis 18.12. We'll turn to the first one, then I got the rest here. But Genesis 18.12. This is the first time the word being is used in the scriptures. And it says, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, Am I waxed am I waxed old? I'm sorry, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. You see the word being there. And I've highlighted that here with bold. Being's the word we're looking for. And it's connecting my Lord. I'm talking about Abraham. Linking my Lord to his age. It's linking those two things, those two nouns. His age, which is a thing. Uh, and uh, the person is Abraham. But the word there says my Lord being old also. So what you would do is under number 5, I wrote Genesis 18.12. It falls under 5. It's connected to, and you can even put it under 1. Or I could combine both of those eventually and say, okay, the way I explained it made it easier to understand what number 1 is, the definition number 1. But ultimately, it's definition number 1. But I, I put 5, so I put it under both. You can do it how you do it and how you set it up. But you want the definitions on one page here, I'm sorry, and you want a list over here where you start putting the verses under the different definitions. Okay. That's how you do a good word study. But Genesis 18.12 says, My Lord being old also. So being is not synonymous with person here. It's connecting a person with an uh, age. A noun with a noun. Okay. Uh, Genesis 19.16. 19.16. We'll just slowly turn. 19.16. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hands, and upon the hands of his wife, and upon the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. We see here that two, uh, two persons are being linked by the word being. Okay. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Well, here it says God, capital G God. Okay. But the Lord being merciful unto him. The Lord... So the first noun, being merciful unto him, that's the other noun. So the being shows the act, merciful unto him, that's the act that's being linked to the Lord. Being oftentimes, when I keep reading the Bible, it just links two things. Okay, but this whole, like I said, it's not about a debate or an argument. If Brian wants to use the word being and he's just being prideful and stubborn about it, let him. I'm going to stick with the Bible, and the Bible says, I was looking for my Bible over here, the Bible says that Jesus is called a person, and the Godhead is God the Father, the soul, in the person of Jesus Christ, who has the body, and he has the Holy Spirit in him. And the soul of Jesus Christ is God the Father. So the Godhead teaches that God the Father is in the person of Jesus Christ, singular, 
That's what the Godhead teaches. The Trinity is pagan. It's false. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. We've got to keep going here. But you see a connection there. Being has to do with connecting one thing to another. Person, place, or thing. I'm sorry. Connecting one person, place, or thing with another person, place, or thing. Genesis 21.4. Go to 21.4. This is what this is what someone should be doing. If they if they just read from here and say, therefore I'm right, everybody else is wrong, uh, they've forgotten what the final authority is. Okay? If I've ever done that, forgive me, okay? Uh, I'll read the definition sometimes, but then I've done word studies on person. I've done word studies on all kinds of things where I'm saying that the world's using it wrong and they're perverting the word uh, and using the wrong definition. I've done word studies for the most part, okay? because I want to know what the Bible actually teaches, not what man teaches. Genesis 21.4, and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old as God had commanded him. Like I said, most of the time in the Bible you're going to find it has to do with age. It's linking the age, remember what definition one was? Uh, a particular state or condition. What's the condition? His age. It's stating the. It's connecting two nouns together, and showing the state of somebody. And oftentimes you'll find the word "being" in the Bible is used to show someone's age. Okay, uh, being sick eight days. You can say the man being sick eight days. It still show. It links a condition to. A noun, a person. So the word being itself has nothing to do with the person. It has to do with linking a condition to a said person. Right. And that's what we see here. Isaac is the noun, the person, being eight days old, another noun. Okay, eight days old, the age. Okay, his condition is he's eight days old. But being in itself isn't a person. Genesis 24, 27 24, 27. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I, being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Now we see there, I, there's you have the person, the noun, being in the way. The Lord led me to the house. But being, it's linking the way, the way he was going, the action, to um, the noun. So, you, like I said, you can put that under number five, or you can put it under number one, because stating his condition, the way, his action, what he was doing, is being connected to the person itself. But the word being is not interchangeable with the word person here. I'm saying here. Okay. The whole point of this is when you guys finish the study, I want in the comment sections, I want to know from you, brother says Christ, if you're actually doing the work and not just following me, not just following some other man out there, being a respecter of persons in judgment, and just being a follower, can you guys actually, is this your final authority in all matters of faith and practice? Are you guys willing to take the time to do what it takes to know this book and hide it in your heart? You can watch Bible studies. I do it all the time. But Bible studies people do. You need to be doing the study for yourself, too. You need to be expounding a little bit more, making sure what I'm saying is truth, or what someone else is saying is truth. Genesis 24, 27. Did we just do that one? Nope. Yes, we did. I being in the way. Uh, Genesis 34, 30. Just and Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, Ye have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I, being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall destroy, I shall be destroyed, I and my house. When he says, I being few in number, the few in number is talking about I and my house. So he's saying, me, being few in, being few in number, is talking about the amount compared to those other people. So once again, it's comparing two nouns together, person, place, or thing. The thing, the person here is him, 
and he's comparing it to being few in number, being few in number, and then he's comparing it again to the people that he's made that his two sons made him distinct in. If you read the story, they use circumcision to slaughter lots of people. When Dinah, their daughter, uh, was basically raped, but you have to read the story. But when you do a word study, it's not about getting so hardcore into the story. We want to sometimes. Oh, we want to get into the story. We want to learn something from it. But when you're doing a word study, your whole point is just to get the context, and you move to the next word. Then you get the context of the word, the definition of the word, and then you get to the next one. Okay, so here, I being few in number falls under definition number one, or my definition number five, connecting one noun with another noun. All right. But that's how you do it. You connect them one by one to different uh, definitions. That's how you do a proper word study. You don't just read from here and find the definition you like and say, I'm justified in using it here. Even though it's not found here, but I'm justified in using it here. It needs to be found here. Now, I'm going to let you guys do the study and, t and tell me if you can find a verse in here where being is being used by itself as a noun. And it's interchangeable with person. Then you can let me know if you find out if God the Father is ever referred to as a being, uh, Jesus ever referred to as a being, as a noun, um, or if the Holy Spirit ever referred to as a being, as a noun. So far we're finding out it's linking two things together. Being by itself is not used. This definition says you can use it, but it's not used in the Bible as that definition. Right. And here's the thing, I'll be doing another video on this. Brothers and Christ, there's nothing wrong with using the word being for a noun. There isn't. Hear me out, though. The world says that's one of the definitions, and you read it off of a passage, or you read it in a newspaper, or in a book, or you see it on a billboard sign, and it's being used as a noun. There's, that doesn't make you in sin. Okay? The sin comes in when you try to take a definition that the world came up with and say, the Bible says, and it's okay for me to use, in this situation, being interchanged with person. Uh, no, now you're in sin, because now you're adding to the scriptures, and that's wrong. You're adding definitions to words that the Bible doesn't support. The world does, so when you're using it in the world, that's one thing. But when you're trying to say the Bible says, you need to be using words that are in the Bible. And I said the Bible says. Where do you find the Holy Scriptures? It'll be another video. In the Bible, okay? But when you say the Word of God says... It better say that word, and then you better use that word the way the Bible uses that word, in the right context, the right definition. Mm -hmm. Genesis 35, 29. 35, 29. And Isaac gave up the ghost and died, and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days, and his son Esau and Jacob buried him. So you have Isaac being old and full of days. See how it's linking his age again to the person? But once again, being is not being used for person. Genesis 37, 2. Like I said that was just the easiest definition I could come up with. Two nouns being connected to one another. And it makes it so easy to understand. Thir Genesis 37, 2. Now, it might not always be that definition. We wrote down every, I told you to write down every definition. Make sure you've done it. You've got a piece of paper that has all the definitions we talked about. And then you've got a separate piece of paper to start writing down verses underneath said definition. Okay. Genesis 37, 2. There are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, okay, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilha and with the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. But we're looking at the word being, okay? Joseph being 17 years old. Once again, it's connecting his age, an age, to a person, being Joseph, his state, how old he is. Okay? Genesis 50, 23, 26. Last one in, the, in, the, in this book, Genesis 50, 26. Actually, it's the last verse in the last book of, of Genesis. So Joseph died being 110 years old. Being 110 years old. And they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Once again, it's connecting his age to his death, to the person's death. When did he die? 
at this age. Joseph died. And it says being, it says, oh, I want to tell you how old he is when he died. So it connects it by saying being. Right? Once again, being is not used as a replacement for person. Now it could, somewhere in this, in this book, we've only done one book so far, which is Genesis. Um, but we did Genesis together. I want to see you guys keep going. This is just to show you how to do a proper word study. And we decide to use the word being. Okay? How do you do a proper word study? By just telling people, this is the definition here. Therefore, I used it. Therefore, I'm right. And everybody else is wrong. Is that how we're supposed to do it? No. We're supposed to take time to go through every time the word being is used and get the context. That's called properly studying the word of God. That's 2 Timothy 2.15. Rightly dividing. What definition is being used here for this word? What definition is being, be, is being used for being in this passage? What definition is being used for being in this other passage? You've got to go through each one and do a proper word study. Okay, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Anytime I've put my foot in my mouth, but most of the time it's because I tried to do shortcuts. I tried shortcuts. Oh, here's the definition. Or, so-and-so said it, therefore it's got to be okay, and I took shortcuts. And in the end, you're going to be ashamed, just as I was, when I realized I was wrong. I should have looked it up myself. I should have done the study for myself. Oftentimes, like, you watch certain brethren do Bible studies, you do studies with them and go, they line up, praise the Lord. You've done the study with them, confirmed it, They're, they line up, praise the Lord. I'm not saying everybody you watch is going to be wrong. But there's going to be times where they are wrong, where I'm wrong. And you need to do the study for yourself to line up and say, okay, hey, brother, you said that one thing over there, and I just want you to know, this verse here you skipped or you forgot it or missed it because, like I said, much studying is weariness to the flesh. You might end up skipping things. Or you take a break, and when you come back, you might have accidentally skipped things. Okay? Have some grace. Have some grace, brother, says Christ. Real grace. Uh, not some of the grace some of the brethren have had, supposedly have had lately, but real grace for some brethren that they make mistakes. You've made the mistakes, so you have grace for them that make the mistakes. All right. So it takes time to study the Word of God. Some brethren are becoming fast food Christianity and not doing the work necessary. And brethren, I'm talking about men in ministry, and brethren, you're starting to get into fast food Christianity. You like fast food. You like it, let them doing all the work for you and them sitting there and you just watch with some popcorn or while you're eating or while you're playing or doing something. I've already been honest with you, Brother Surprise. There's times where I listen to Bible studies while I'm working. But the first time I ever listen to that Bible study, I'm sitting there with this book open. Sometimes the second or third time I'm sitting there with this book open. The Bible studies I listen to is Bible studies I've listened to a million times to keep it fresh in my heart. I've already followed along with this and said, okay, the Bible study lines up with, with this book. It's a good Bible study. It's true. Now I can listen to it when I'm out there working in the garden. Or I'm out here sitting on the deck talking with the Lord. Well, if it's a Bible study, I'm not talking with the Lord. I'm listening. Um, but when I listen to music, wordless music, I talk to the Lord. But it takes time to study, and brethren are starting to fall into laziness and fast food Christianity. Okay? Um, now, is being an everywhere... Now, the, what you're looking for for this study, when you're doing... Remember, when you do a word study, there's usually a reason to do a word study. There's Sometimes you might get bored and just say, I'm going to grab some random word and do a word study. There's nothing wrong with that. But oftentimes, brothers and Christ, when you do a word study, it's because there's been some controversy that comes up that says this word isn't being used right. And you've got to go, okay, i got to do a study, Lord. If there's, a, there's a contradiction between brethren. One says this, one says that. I need to get into scriptures and find out what the Lord says and see which one lines up with the scriptures and which one is wrong. Okay? So when you're doing this study and you continue going from book after book after book, remember all the definitions, and like I said, leave an extra def, like I, we did one through five, write a number six down and put a question mark. And the only reason you have a question mark there is because you might come across a different definition that you didn't find in here. Like I did, I just went, you know, noun connected to another noun is what being is. It's connecting you. Okay? Now, is being, every time, what you're looking for is the word being ever used in the same way the word person is. Because they say it's synonymous with person. Is it being used the same way? The same definition. We just read that being can be used for an animal. An animal's not a person. 
Okay? Being can be used for being superior. That has nothing to do with the person. Maybe a person being superior, but it's like the, the superior part is not a person. Not body, soul, and spirit. Okay? That's what the Godhead's about. When we say Jesus is a person, he has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And not just any soul and spirit. He's got God the Father, which is the soul that's in him, and he has the Holy Spirit that's in him. We have a spirit, lowercase spirit, a spirit that keeps us alive. Everyone has a lowercase spirit, saved and lost. But what separates us from the lost world is we get saved, and the Holy Spirit comes into us as well. But Jesus has the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, we did another study on this where he had the Holy Spirit to begin with at his birth. But that sign, when you saw the Holy Spirit come down like as a dove, was a sign for John the Baptist. He's the only one that saw it, and it was a sign, like a vision, a sign for him. It was a vision. Okay. He's the only one that saw it. The people as a whole didn't see it. But I believe, according to the scriptures, when they were babies, they were being filled with the Holy Spirit. The, the mothers were being filled with the Holy Spirit, but you have to read into that. I don't want to get into another study. But is it used for person? Is being synonymous with the word person? You heard a brother in Christ say, it's that being is synonymous with the word person, it's not a big deal. And you have other brethren saying, yes, it is a big deal, because being is not synonymous with person. Person is different than being. Being is connecting a person with a condition, connecting a person with another person, connecting a person with a thing, you know, two nouns being connected together, being connected, <laughs> just used in a sense. But it doesn't mean person in itself, by itself. You can't just say, the Bible, does the Bible say being by itself? That being walked to the house. Does it ever say that? That's what you guys need to find out, because I want you to do the Bible study, okay? An individual man, woman, or child being consistent of body and soul. We apply the word to living beings only. Notice the word beings in there. Living beings. They tried to use it in the definition. But remember, this is not the final authority. This is. And note that we apply the word to living beings only. In other words, a person, or a body that's alive. It's connecting those two things. A body that's dead, has no spirit, no soul, is not a person. But, like I said, one of the definitions for being was, was an animal. Okay. So you apply the word to living men, women, and children only. Possessed of a rational nature. The body when dead is not called a person. Okay. So if a body that's dead is not called a person, remember a person has body, soul, and spirit, then how can a body that's dead be referred to as a being? John being dead. It's linking the state of John to the state he's in. He's dead. So you can use being for someone who's dead. But you can't use person for someone who's dead. See, the definitions... You've got to be careful with that when you do the study, brothers of Christ. So I want you to do the study. Keep going. We did Genesis together. We linked up all the definitions. Okay, it's, it's, it's basically number one definition, but I like my five definition because it makes it easier for me. It's linking one noun with another noun. Okay, but, the, but it's its state. It's linking one noun to a state. Off on everything we found, it's linking a person to a state or a place. You're going to find out as you keep going to a place, to a state, God's mercy, to an action. Okay, it's linking the two. Okay. The thing that it's linked to is mercy, is the thing. It's, it's, it's using it as a thing. Uh, God's mercy. So uh, continue the study, brother, sister, Christ, and let me know what you find in the, co co um, in the comment section. Okay? Let me know, did you find, uh, number two, a person existing? Is being ever used? Because when I went through, I, I'm going to go through it again, just as you guys are going to be going through it. I'm going to go through it for, fully again to make sure I didn't miss anything. Is there any verses in the Bible where the word being is being used the same way the word person is? So that's the whole point of doing a Bible study. Now for this argument, my thing for Brother Brian, but he won't listen, um, is use the word person because that's what the Bible uses. It doesn't use the word being for Godhead. It's Godhead is God the Father. There's only one capital G, God the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. God the Father in the person singular of Jesus Christ. 
I don't say being. I don't use the word God in one being. No, it's God in one person. Now, the lost world likes to say God in three persons. They're false gods, plural. But the King James Bible teaches capital G God, the Father, in the person singular of Jesus Christ. That's what I say because that's what the Bible says. That should solve everything, you know. And if you're not prideful and puffed up, you'll be like, yeah, that's how I should say it. Okay? Unless you can show me I'm wrong, but that's how we should say it. Okay? But that would be my advice once you do the study. If you find out what I found out, more than anything, you just do the study. There's the word study that we're doing here. Another study you can do a subject. You can look up every time God is mentioned and see and and being and see if it's ever referred to as God himself. Okay? When I did person word study, I, what I was looking for is God the Father. Was he ever referred to as a person? The word person. Not he, him. That's not... That we're looking up for the word person. When you say God in three persons, well, it says he here. That makes him a person. No, it doesn't. And we've proved that in Scripture. Emotions are being used as he or she. Cities are being referred to as he or she. They're not persons. Okay? Person has a body, soul, and always referred to someone who's living. Has to have a body, soul, and spirit in, in, in order to be a person. But when I did that word study in person, I was looking for God the Father. When was he ever referred to as person? Uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Where is he ever referred to a person? Oh, we found it four times in the scriptures. Um, the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of God. When is he uh, referred to as a person? And when you do that study, you find out only Jesus was ever referred to a person when it comes to the Godhead, body, soul, and spirit. The only time. So what would solve this in, in a heartbeat is just look for God. When's God the Father ever referred to as a being? I didn't find it. Where is Jesus Christ ever referred to as a being, as a noun, by itself, as a noun, person, place, or thing? I didn't find it. Where is the Holy Spirit referred to as a being? I didn't find it. If being was the same thing as, as person, you'd find Jesus Christ, who is the person singular of the Godhead, being referred to as being. But where's that at? I couldn't find it. So I didn't want you guys taking my word for it. I want you guys to do the study for yourselves. Okay? Do the study for yourselves, brothers of Christ. Keep going. Don't stop at Genesis. There's a lot of things. You might find something new that I missed. A different way that being's being used. It's still not being used for person, but sometimes God will show you something you weren't even looking for, saying, hey, I'm going to give you a little nugget that gold nugget of wisdom. Let me show you something that you weren't really looking for, but I'm going to show you. How many times have we studied the Bible, we were looking for one thing, and God showed us something else? You never know. You just got to get down there and start studying. So we're going to end that with this. Didn't mean for it to go too long, brothers and Christ. But how to do a proper word study. You get the definitions on one page, and you write down one through something on the other page of however many definitions you come across, and I, I, right by one, you put Genesis something, Genesis something, Genesis something. Or you can just do one page and have all the definitions, spread them out, so you have space to write them in underneath each definition. Okay, the Genesis such and such, the word is following this definition. Uh, under this, uh, Job such and such, it was following this definition. And you start lining everything up so you can have everything in order. So when you go through it, you go, okay... This word is used this many times under this definition. This word is used this many times under definition number two. It's used this many times in definition three. And you can find out if the Bible ever uses being as a synonymous with person. Right. I want you to do the study, brothers of Christ. So I can keep going and keep going. But I love you, brothers of Christ. Please stay in the word. Please stay in the studies. Uh, my prayer for you, brothers and sisters Christ, in these last days is to keep standing. Stand, stand, stand. Don't faint, don't falter. Don't start falling into fast food Christianity. Remember the three enemies, the world, the flesh, and Satan. Oftentimes when you have people that fall into fast food Christianity, it's two reasons. They're lazy. I've been there. I've been there. Um, or you're trying to justify the world, the flesh, or doing things Satan's way. Remember to the two number two things that are Satan's way is pride. He's the king of the, all the children of pride. I yeah, corrected on that because I kind of I put two verses together and mixed them up. The second verse I mixed up is he's, his way is lying and deception. He's the father of lies. You have your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. 
He was a liar from the beginning and the father of it. Okay? Oftentimes when people do lazy studies, um, well, they're not doing a 100% job. It's only like 50% or 20% effort. It's because they're trying to justify one of those three things. Or they're just being lazy. They're trying to throw stuff out way too quick. I've done that. I've made that mistake where I didn't take time to actually study it fully and just throw it out there. And often you risk making a huge mistake and having to be ashamed because you didn't rightly divide and you didn't study. That we read in 2 Timothy 2.15. It happens. It's happened to me and it'll happen to you when you get lazy sometimes and you don't do a full study. Oh, I got someone here. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God the Father, Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Okay, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.